What's going on guys, Nathan here today. I'm gonna give you nine easy poker strategies that every decent poker player should know if you've been playing poker for a while and you're not quite seeing the results that you'd hope for yet, you're gonna learn exactly what hands to play in today's video, when to bet, raise, bluff, and so on. Let's jump into it. So counting down from nine to one, guys, here we go. Number nine is to abuse the limpers. Now guys, when somebody just calls before the flop, which is also called limping, you should literally view this as free money in poker. This is like somebody has just dropped some money on the sidewalk and it's just up to you now to go pick it up. They don't care about that money. It's yours now. So guys, you should raise them up every single time if you have any kind of remotely playable hands. Do not just limp like they do. So for example, you're playing a $1, $2 cash game. You've got the ace five of hearts. You want to raise it up to $8 here. Why $8? Guys, I have found that this is a roughly decent amount to get get people to fold in today's games. If you are getting too many colors though, you want to raise it more than this. And if you're getting no colors at all, sometimes you might want to lower it. And we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. But first off, let's talk about what hands you should actually play. Cause that's fairly important of course in poker. So tip number eight here, I have put the image on your screen. These are the hands in red that I would suggest if you're playing in a six player poker game. As you can see, this is the top 20% hands roughly of all hands that you can be dealt in a game of poker basically every single Broadway hand and a Broadway hand is any two cards ten and above actually we're not playing Queen 10 offsuit and I should mention that when it says O oh, after any of these hands that means offsuit that means that it's there are two different suits for example the Queen of Hearts and ten of spades I would not play that hand however as you can see the QTS and the S stands for suited for example, that hand would be something like the Queen of Diamonds, Ten of Diamonds. I would play the suited variety of that hand. So all Broadway hands, all pocket pairs, every single suited ace. So that is Ace King suited all the way down to Ace Deuce suited and a bunch of other suited connectors. Guys, if you only play strong hands like this in a six player poker game, you're simply going to give yourself a mathematical edge entering the hand, which is going to mean more money in your pocket at the end of the day but what if you play nine player games moving on to tip number seven here here is the chart for nine player poker games i suggest that you play the top 15 percent of hands in a nine player game let me break that down for you quickly the reason why you want to play a slightly tighter range guys in a nine player game is because there are of course more players at the table and that means the chances that somebody has something decent go up so of course you want to have better starting hand selection in a situation like that so I would suggest playing most Broadway hands, once again, all pocket pairs, most suited aces, and a couple other hands. If you play a strong range like this, guys, in a nine player poker game, once again, you're going to give yourself a strong mathematical advantage when you enter the hand versus most players. And that's simply going to lead to more success at the poker table for you. Moving on to tip number six now is to always raise preflop. So we already talked about that off the top. When somebody limps, you raise. So guys, why do we do this though? The reason why is because when you raise before the flop, this is going to improve the chances of you winning the hand dramatically, as we're going to talk about in the examples coming up on the flop turn and river, because you have the betting lead. And basically this allows you to lean on your opponents. They have it seared in their head that you have something good. You've already represented strength. So often we can take away the pot later on by simply making a bet, even when we have nothing. So once again, guys, I would use three times the big blind as a default. So if you're playing a $1, $2 cash game, the big blind is $2, three times $2 is of course $6. So if you have any one of the hands that you just saw on the previous charts, for example, the ace of hearts and jack of spades, you want to be raising it to that amount. Now, once again, guys, I wanna be very clear that this is 100% game specific. And that is why moving on to tip number five, you want to aim for one caller. So we just talked talked about how I use a three times the blind default strategy. However, if I'm playing in a home game versus a bunch of my drunk buddies who are not folding anything, I'm not 
not going to raise it three times the blind, guys. I'm going to raise it a lot more when I have a really strong hand like pocket aces, for example, because if I only raise it three times the blind and the entire table calls, as you can see on your screen there, pocket aces can be a statistical underdog. And that is why you always want to aim for one caller and the amount that is going to get you one caller is going to depend heavily on what type of game you're playing in. So guys, bottom line, raise it to whatever amount is ideally going to get you one caller on average. That is the correct amount in your game that you're playing in. I would suggest three times as a default, but in some poker games, you're going to have to try five times, ten times. If you're playing play money poker on the internet and you got pocket aces, just go all in because they don't fold anything. All right, guys, let's move on to tip number four now. Let's talk about hand reading. Let's move on to the post flop streets now, the flop turn and river. So all good poker players, guys, understand the value of hand reading. And that is basically the art of putting your opponent on a range of hands that they could likely have. So you have two red aces, ace of hearts and ace of diamonds. And by the river, you get raised on the board of three of spades, six of diamonds, seven of hearts, eight of clubs and 10 of spades. Guys, versus a tight player in this situation, I can tell you from my nearly 20 years in this game as a professional poker player that this is never a bluff. Guys, they have three of a kind, which is also called a set with a hand like pocket threes, pocket sixes, pocket sevens, pocket eights, or pocket tens. The vast overwhelming majority of the time here, they also could easily have a straight if they've got any nine in their hand or if they could have flopped it with a hand like five, four. Guys, the bottom line is tight players will not raise you on the end here with hands like aces, kings, queens, jacks. In fact, they would have re-raised you pre-flop. They would have already told you earlier on in the hands. In a situation like this, guys, you need to be laying down your one pair hand when you get raised on the river. All right, let's talk about value betting top pair now. Tip number three here. All good poker players know to get full value every single time with top pair. So in this example, we have the queen of hearts and the jack of diamonds. And by the river, the board reads the 10 queen four seven nine with no possible flush guys if they check to you here you want to bet 50 percent of the pot in order to get calls from all of their worst hands like an ace 10 a king 10 a jack 10 a jack 9 a pocket jacks and so on you don't want to bet too big here meaning you don't want to bet like 80 percent of the pot because often a decent player is going to highly consider throwing away hands like this which is of course a disaster for us and on the flip side, you don't want to bet only 20% of the pot here because then you're betting too little and you're not getting enough value. So I've often find that when you're making a value bet on the end here with top pair, around 50% of the pot is usually the sweet spot versus decent players to get a call out of second best hands like this. Let's move on to tip number two now, which is to over bet with the nuts. Now guys, I literally wrote an entire book on this. It's called Crushing the Micro Stakes. It was my first book. And I talk about how I created some of the highest winnings in online poker history at the lower limits by using this exact strategy. By the way, I'll put the link for my book in the description below. But guys, in a nutshell, the nuts in poker just means the best hand possible or one of the best hands possible. And specifically, if you're up against a recreational player who we lovingly refer to as the fish, over betting the pot is an excellent way to get all their money, which is, of course, the whole goal of poker. So if you've got a hand like pocket sixes, for example, and the flop comes down with the jack six three, if they've got pocket aces, which we know that no recreational player is ever going to fold, you are 91% to win the pot here. So there's no point in betting small amounts here. So guys, we never want to check here. Okay, we want to start building the pot. And you also don't want to bet small. You don't want to bet 20%. You don't want to bet 50%. Because once again, we're up against a recreational player who if they have a strong hand, like this is never folding for any amount. So guys, often in a situation like this, I know it will go against everything the so-called experts are teaching these days, but in a spot like this, if the pot's $100, I am simply gonna bet $125, especially if I've got the fish on tilt already, which is something that I would highly suggest you do. You want to over bet when you finally hit the big hand. I know it's counterintuitive, and I know it's not what any of the solvers software or the so-called expert coaches are teaching these days. But guys, all high level poker players know that this is the number one way to quickly separate the fish from their money if you want 
to win a big pot, you need to build it, and when you know they're absolutely not folding for any amount of money, why would you check or bet less? That's a losing strategy, guys, versus the fish when you hit a monster over bet, and you're going to win a lot more money. All right, guys, let's move on to the number one poker tip now, which is to get thin value versus the fish. So let's close up here also talking about our fishy friends, and that is never giving them a cheap showdown. Guys, in a situation where you have queen jack on a river of king eight, jack five, six, rainbow, meaning that there's no possible flush, you want to be betting again here. Because once again, as we just talked about, fish don't fold anything. If they've got a hand like nine, eight here, they're absolutely going to make the call. So you don't want to make the mistake, guys, of just checking here and letting fish have a cheap showdown. If they've got anything at all, if they've got a five, if they've got a four, heck, if they've even got ace high, they will will often make the call here, especially if they're on tilt. Guys, try out these nine tips for yourself, and I think you're going to have a lot more success. And also, like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. And lastly, if you want to know my entire strategy to absolutely crush the small and mid-stakes games, make sure you grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet. That'll be the top link in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I appreciate you. I will catch you next time.